So now we're getting to the point of doing the um, the, the mark the QTL analysis and and some of the mapping work. Okay, and so what we want to do simply was let's take a trait and we took a what we considered a quantitative trait specific gravity. We took one one set of data. We took the 2010 Idaho data. We give kudos to Rich Novi for that. We, we figured that he had a good data set for us to work with. And, and uh, we said, let's just do a single marker ANOVAs on all 800 simplex segregating SNPs. And so you can see in, one, in the premier russet, we have 487 SNPs, uh, uh, simplex SNP segregating, and in Rio Grande, we have 313. So of those, 56 and 77 SNPs ended up having uh, significant uh, probabilities for uh, or significance for uh, specific gravity. If we were to use the multiple test corrections, or the Bonferroni or the SIDAC done it, um, it actually none of this none of the SNPs actually show uh, significance. However, let's just take a, a moment and look at this. Now again, what we have are our 12 uh, our 12 chromosomes, and what we have along here is the the length of the of the pseudo molecule. So it's going from zero to 80 megabases for chromosome one. And what we have is the 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 dots mark each of the SNPs that we looked at in Premier Russet for the specific gravity um, uh, significance. And this red line drawn here along the um, the table or the figure is our cutoff for the 5%. So if those um, uh, dots are below the line, they were, they were showing the st statistical significance in the single marker ANOVAs. Just focusing in on that chromosome 1 at this point, and uh, you can see that we had three SNPs that fell within that 0.05% uh, uh, range for significance, whereas the others didn't. So let's just kind of keep that there. Just to make a point, you can see that uh, we had actually 46 SNPs in this, um, uh, along this chromosome arm. And uh, uh, also, when we're using the map, uh, Tetraploid map uh, software, it only will take a maximum of 50 markers per chromosome at a time. So it was nice that our, our data was falling within those um, uh, limits of the software. Here's another way using the JUMP software that we could visualize the data from the single marker uh, ANOVAs for uh, the simplex markers for specific gravity. So what we have um, here are the, the six chromosomes where we found significant um, uh, ANOVAs for, those, um, uh, for specific gravity. Now, um, and again, these are in the in linear order along the chromosome. So we have these color coded. So if it's um, homozygous for either the A or the B, they were color coded blue. If they were heterozygous for either the the a, well for A B, then they were co color coded red. So what you can see here is for each um, um, SNP. Was it the heterozygous condition red or the homozygous condition blue that was giving us the higher specific gravity or the lower specific gravity? So that's just a nice way to visualize data. And so you can see that we had multiple SNPs at times probably um, identifying a similar uh, QTL on the chromosome. And here we had a, a very large cluster of SNPs that were in there. So you can see that. So we have six chromosomes with uh, showing uh, significant SNPs for specific gravity using the single marker ANOVAs. That was in the Premier Russet. Now we're looking at the Rio Grande. And again, instead of the, uh, the six chromosomes, we have five chromosomes showing uh, SNPs that were significant for specific gravity. Um, and they were common with the Premier Russet. So um, I thought that that was some, some good validation of what was of potential QTLs to start with, and again, we have the same color coding where the blue is the homozygous condition and the red is the, the heterozygote.
So you can see here that we had a number of homozygotes that were given the, the higher specific gravity. 